I wasn't going to post this. I've been sitting on this video for weeks. But you guys have been part of this from the beginning, so I got to post it. I guess I should issue a trigger warning that um, it's not the happiest story I've ever told. It's up to you if you want to watch it. Here it is. Maximalist mini bars with Mary and Captain and you. Get on the bus! Captain and I have been here for about 10 days in our little oasis in the middle of Scottsdale, Arizona. If you didn't see the last video, you might want to check it out because it shows how hard it was to find this place and also how hard the lady at the Arizona State Trust Land Office tried to talk me out of camping here because she said the neighbors don't like it when people camp here. Well, I don't really know how the neighbors feel, but it honestly doesn't seem like anybody even still realizes I'm in here. Not unless they get out the binoculars and climb up on the roof because we're not really that close to the houses. And this piece of land is pretty big. Looking around at how much development there is in this area, from all the little strip malls to all the big housing developments, it really is pretty cool that this land is even still here for us to camp on. We've explored a lot of it. Captain still loves to explore, though he's not quite up for as much of that as he used to be. I'm just kind of amazed how many saguaro cactuses there are here. Huge ones, you know, and how healthy they look. A cactus this big could be like 200 years old. But on the next dirt road over, there's some construction company that's been dumping a lot of crap, which is probably why the neighbors are touchy. It's really awful over there. This road was the cleanest, which is why we're here and not over there. Plus, it's the furthest from the houses. But even on this road, there's an abandoned camp right over there, right in our line of sight. And I want to clean it all up before the others get here. And maybe that'll even get me some brownie points with the neighbors. It's, it's weird. There are three tents, air mattresses, tons of clothes and toiletries. It's all rotted out from being in the sun for a long time. Looks like whoever camped here just walked away, just left all their possessions behind. I guess they didn't get the leave no trace memo. I've been bagging everything up and so far I've got eight bags full. I guess I might have as much as five or six more before I'm done. And then I have to haul it out and find some place to dump it. But I don't want Kat and Pam to have to look across the road to a big pile of trash. So right now... I'm the dump lady. Today, Brad and I are driving up to Flagstaff. Say hello, Brad. Hello, Brad. We're leaving my bus and captain with my friend Julie in Tempe. Kat has to come down to Phoenix for the last phase of treatment and she can't drive between being sick and being on morphine. So we're going up in Brad's car and then I'll be driving Kat's bus back down. Captain can't come with us because the altitude affects his heart, but he's gonna be okay for the day. Julie will take good care of him. I don't have any video of the drive back down from Flagstaff because I was so concentrating on driving because, you know, it's Kat's bus, which is pretty different than mine. Her bus is wider by at least a foot. And I think it was actually my first time driving a dually. Kat was lying down in the bed in the back most of the time, but RJ was sitting right next to me like he was making sure I was driving right. If you've never had a 180 pound dog babysitting you, let me tell you, it's an experience. In my bus, Captain is the co-pilot, but in Kat's bus, that's RJ's job. Now we're all here. And David is here too. He arrived right after we got back, so it's a whole big entourage now. Two buses, two vans, two trailers, four dogs, three women, and one man, well, no, two men, because Brad comes by too, plus a car. Let's see what the neighbors think of that. It's like 4.30 in the morning. Captain is having a really hard night. I promised him I wasn't going to take him, and, you know, put him through any more hospital stays or anything like that. But I mean, I can't just leave him like that. I have to, you know, I have to take him to the hospital. There's an animal hospital about a mile and a half up the road. I was going to wait till the morning because as soon as I start this bus, it's going to wake everybody up. But I have to do it. I have to do it. So I drove to the closest animal hospital about a mile and a half from camp. I went in there thinking, okay, let's just get him through this. Let's get him through this because he's come through it, you know, a bunch of times before. He, as soon as he gets some oxygen, he usually bounces right back. I actually just bought an oxygen kit so that I can administer it to him myself, but it, it arrives tomorrow. So, Cat only has five more radiation treatments, so let's just get him through this, let's get her through that, and then... So as soon as the vet tech took a look at him, looked at his gums, 
she rushed him right back into oxygen, which is what I was expecting them to do. And he stayed in the oxygen cage while I was working out the money stuff, which that took a couple of hours because it got really weird. I mean, it always gets really weird in these vet clinics. They wanted the whole $2,000 estimate up front, and I could only give them half of that until tomorrow because, you know, I had to transfer some money. I have to break open the piggy bank to get that last scrap of my emergency fund out of there. And I wasn't saying I couldn't pay. I just needed a day a day to get the second half of it together but they're kind of pushing me you know because i don't have two thousand bucks on hand they're pushing me to just let him go and one thing about me i never ever want to end a life because of money especially not captain's life i finally got them talked into a payment plan you know letting me pay the other half tomorrow but then the doctor said before we go through all that why don't you come back and see him so I did. Another thing about me, I have never, well, I would never want to let any baby of mine suffer just because I can't let go. You know, I mean, if I had thought he was ready, I would have let him go. Well, I'd like to think I would have anyway, although for months I've been saying to him, please don't die. Hang on just a little longer. Hang on till cat's out of the woods. And I believe, I believe he really, really tried to do. When I went in the back to see him, I've seen Captain in many doctor's offices, many hospitals, and usually when I come in, he gets right up and he starts barking up a storm like he's demanding that I get him out of there. But this time, he didn't even notice me at first. He was lying flat on the floor of the oxygen cage. Finally, he realized I was there and he got up. He couldn't walk more than a few steps, but he came over to where I had my arm through the hole in the oxygen cage and he kissed my hand and I knew he was ready. So me and my beautiful little soulmate boy said goodbye out on the patio of the hospital. I just held him on my shoulder just the way he liked right here. And the doctor administered the shot and he was gone so fast. And I just held him there for a long time, just his, you know, his ear against the side of my head. And that bossy little voice, just totally silent. I had to let him go. I, I, it was the right thing to do. It was the last thing that I could do for him to show him how much I loved him. And I know it was the right thing, but I feel so lost. So now I'm sitting in a parking lot. I don't want to go back to camp because everybody's going to be waiting for me there to waiting to hug me and tell me how sorry they are. And I love them all. But if I can't have captain right now, I just want to be alone, you know, because my co-pilot is gone and I have to be there, you know, I have to be there for Kat. I have to get somehow get past this and be there for Kat, but I don't know how to do that. Right now, all I can really think of is to, you know, put one foot in front of the other, and I don't even really know how to do that. <laughs>